Chapter 6.3, HL Triangle Congruence. The HL stands for Hypotenuse Leg Triangle Congruence. Capítulo 6.3, uh, HL Congruencia de Triángulos. La HL significa la hipotenusa y una pierna de un triángulo de 90 grados. All right, so first let's start off with a quick recap of what we've done of the congruence theorems that we've looked at up to this point. We've done angle, side, angle, side, 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 angle, side, and angle, angle, side. Before any exam comes, I'll review all of those, all right? But I'm just showing you what we've done the last four lessons. And today we're going to do our last one, which is the hypotenuse leg triangle congruence theorem. Okay, uh, this is one that only applies to right triangles. And um, remember that in a right triangle, the longest side, which is always the side opposite the 90 degree angle, the side opposite the 90 degree angle is called the hypotenuse, and the two other sides are called the legs. Okay, um, primero que nada, eh, aquí enseña los cuatro teoremas que ya estudiamos en las últimas cuatro clases. Hicimos ángulo, lado, ángulo, lado, 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 ángulo, lado, y ángulo, ángulo, lado. Hoy es el último que vamos a estudiar, que es uh, la hipotenusa, con la hipotenusa y una pierna de un triángulo de 90 grados, se puede determinar si los dos triángulos son congruentes. Recuerden que en, en un triángulo de 90 grados, el lado más largo que siempre es el lado opuesto al ángulo de 90 grados, se le llama la hipotenusa, y los dos otros lados se le llama las piernas, o en inglés, los legs. All right, so, all right, so like I just said, if, you, if you're trying to prove that two triangles are congruent, and they're 90 degree angles, if the hypotenuse of both of them is congruent, all right, so the hypotenuse in both of them is congruent, and one of the legs is congruent to the corresponding leg in the other triangle, then just based on that information alone, you could determine that the two triangles are congruent. That's what, that's what this entire chapter is about. Si tienen dos triángulos de 90 grados y la hipotenusa de los dos es congruente y una pierna es congruente a la pierna que corresponde en el otro triángulo, ya con esa información se puede determinar que los dos triángulos son congruentes por el, este teorema de hipotenusa y pierna. All right, so the first couple questions on your homework are going to be like this, where you got to determine if these uh, triangles are congruent. Right? It says determine whether enough information is given to prove that the triangles are congruent. La primera pregunta de, las, de la tarea de hoy um, son como esto. Estos problemas donde tenemos que determinar si hay suficiente información para decir si los dos triángulos son congruentes. All right, so in the first one, the first one, all right, they're 90 degree angles. The hypotenuse is congruent in both of them. The hypotenuse in both of them is congruent. And you got to realize that they both have this side in common. They both have this leg in common. All right, so therefore... The hypotenuse and the leg of this one is congruent to the hypotenuse and the leg of the other one. La hipotenusa y esta pierna que los dos tienen en común es congruente a la hipotenusa y esta pierna que los dos tienen en común. Así que sí, por el teorema de eh, hipotenusa y pierna. All right, yes, by the hypotenuse leg theorem, they're both congruent. All right, let's look at number three. <clears throat> Excuse me. In number three, all right, they're talking about triangle PQR, so this triangle over here, and triangle S2, STU, which is this triangle over here. They're both 90 degree angles. Um, now, do they tell us that the hypotenuse is the same in both of them? No, they do not. They tell us that the, this leg is congruent to this leg, but they don't tell us anything about the hypotenuse or about any other sides or angles. So there's, in this one, there's not enough information. So no, there's not enough given information. No mencionan nada en esta de la hipotenusa, que si la hipotenusa es congruente a esta hipotenusa, no mencionan, mencionan nada de los, del otro lado tampoco. 
Así que no, no hay suficiente información para determinar que este triángulo es congruente al otro triángulo. All right, number four. Okay, number four. Number four. Okay, actually, give me one second. All right, guys, on number four, I want to point something out that's easy to uh, make a mistake at. Okay, in number four, it shows you that all four sides are equal. All four sides are equal. And it's easy to assume that this is a square, which if it were a square, that would mean that these all the angles are 90 degree angles. All the, all the four angles in the corner are 90 degrees. However, you cannot assume that it's a square because it could also be a rhombus. It could be a rhombus. And in case you forgot what a rhombus is, in a, a rhombus is a, a, a quadrilateral where all sides are equal, but not all four angles. All four angles are not necessarily 90 degrees. All right. A rhombus could have, it has four sides, but all four angles are not 90 degrees necessarily. Okay. So that's why on this on this one, do not assume that it's a square. You cannot assume that it's a square. En este diagrama, okay, todos los lados miden igual, pero no pueden asumir que es un cuadrado, porque puede ser un rhombus. Un rhombus es un cuadrilátero, tiene cuatro lados. Todos los cuatro lados miden igual, pero un rhombus no no necesariamente tiene cuatro ángulos de 90 grados. Así que no pueden asumir que esto es un cuadrado o que estos ángulos son 90 grados. Ok, so with that in mind, now let's answer the question. Ok, um, is there enough information to determine that these two triangles are congruent? Yes, because of side, side, and this side that they both have in common. Side, 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 side. So yes, there is enough information, but you cannot use the HL congruence theorem. It has to be the side, side, side triangle congruence theorem. Si hay suficiente información para determinar que los dos triángulos son congruentes, pero se tiene, se tiene que usar lado, lado y el lado este que tienen los dos en común. No se puede usar HL. Porque no se sabe si este ángulo mide 90 grados. No se puede asumir eso. Y para, H, para la teorema HL, ese teorema solamente aplica a triángulos de 90 grados. All right, let's look at number five. Okay, in number five. In number five, I got to explain a couple things, all right? Um, first of all, the obvious answer that's here is side, angle, side, side, angle, side. That's the first answer. So yes, right off the bat, the answer is yes and side, angle, side. However, there's two more correct answers. Well, there's two more correct answers, but, um, well, let me go over the two other answers. But yet, the most obvious one is side, angle, side, side, ang angle, side. Okay? Now, the um, other possibilities is this, all right? This one. This is, believe it or not, what I'm going to mention now is on your homework, so you should pay attention to this, all right? Rem remember the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is for right triangles, okay? Now, look. Let me draw this. All right, so here are my two triangles. It says that this side with the one line is equal to this side with the one line. So if I, if I make this side A, that means this side is A over here. And this side with the two lines is congruent to this side with the two lines. So if I make this side B, that means this side over here is B. Now, those represent, those variables represent the exact same numbers. All right, so whatever A is, whatever number you want to put for A, this side will be the same thing. And whatever number you want to you wanna put for B, this side will be the same amount. All right, so that means that if I use the Pythagorean theorem, they both got to give me the same answer for the hypotenuse. So in a right triangle, if, if their legs are the same, that means the hypotenuse also has to be the same. So therefore, based on that, we could also use the hypotenuse leg uh, triangle congruence theorem here because if the, if the legs are equal, that means if you use the Pythagorean theorem, 
the hypotenuse is also going to be equal. So I could use the hypotenuse leg theorem to also say that these two triangles are congruent. And I'm going to add one more answer. If you could use the Pythagorean theorem to prove that this side, I'm going to put three lines, this side is congruent to this side, then I could also use the side, side, side angle theorem to uh, side, side, side triangle theorem here to prove that the two triangles are congruent. All right, so let me just say that, all that in Spanish. Okay, si los dos triángulos son congruentes, la primera teorema que se puede usar es lado, ángulo, lado, porque, porque eso está en el diagrama, lado, ángulo, lado, y lado, ángulo, lado. Ahora, si um, lo que estaba enseñando aquí es que recuerden el teorema Pythag Pyth Pyth Pythagorean, ¿ok? No sé cómo decirlo en español, pero en inglés, Pythagorean Theorem, ¿ok? Don, que se puede usar, que se usa en triángulos de 90 grados para encontrar el lado que falta. Si este lado con una rayita es congruente a este lado con una rayita y le pongo A a este lado, eso quiere decir que el otro lado también mide A. Y si este lado con dos rayitas es congruente a este lado con dos rayitas y le pongo B a este lado, el otro lado también tiene que medir B. Eso uh, significa, el, representan el mismo número. Cualquier número que tú le quieres poner a A, este va a tener el mismo número. Así que cuando se hace el teorema Pythagorean, te va a dar la misma, los dos ten, tienen, tienen que dar la misma respuesta para la hipotenusa. Así que por esa razón también se puede decir el teorema hipotenusa pierna. Y si la hipotenusa es congruente en los dos, entonces también se puede decir lado, lado, lado. Se puede usar esa razón también, lado, lado, lado. All right, moving on. There are the answers. You could always pause the video and read what it says there. All right, so same type of question. Determine whether there's enough, enough information to prove that these triangles are congruent. La misma tipo, tipo de pregunta. All right, so if you look at both of them, they're right, right triangles because they both have a 90-degree angle there. Los dos son triángulos de 90 grados. All right, this leg is congruent to this leg. Esta pierna es congruente a esta pierna. And they both have the same hypotenuse. This side that they both have in common is the hypotenuse for both of them. Este lado que los dos tienen en común es la hipotenusa para los dos triángulos. Therefore, yes, by the hypotenuse leg triangle congruence theorem, yes, they are congruent. All right, let's move on. All right, now same type of, this is the exact same uh, diagram, but now they want us to do a proof. And this is on your homework, right? Este es el mismo diagrama que acabamos de ver, pero tenemos que comprobar que un triángulo es congruente al otro. Um, let me display the answer and we'll study it that way. I think that's easier, okay? Aquí está la respuesta. This is on your homework. Esto está en la tarea. All right, so... Given that angle A and angle D are right angles, okay? Te están diciendo que ángulo A y ángulo D son ángulos de 90 grados. Eso es lo que significa right angle, que okay? mide 90 grados, okay? And segment AB is congruent to segment DC. Segmento AB es congruente al segmento DC, okay? So that's the given information that they put on lines 1 and 2. Eso lo pusieron en la línea 1 y 2, La información que nos dieron. Okay, so if they gave us that information, the only thing left for us to, to prove or to show is that they both have the hypotenuse uh, congruent. They both have the, the same hypotenuse. So they put segment BC is congruent to segment BC. Like in this triangle, segment BC is congruent to segment BC in this triangle. And the reason is the reflexive property of congruence. Remember, I keep telling you guys, that comes up a lot. The same segment is congruent to the same segment. Um, and the property that you always put for that, for the reason, is the reflexive property. That's going to come up, continue to come up a lot. Okay, recuerden que yo siempre digo que esto sale mucho. Cuando ponen un segmento congruente al mismo segmento, siempre es la propiedad reflexiva. Y como ya nos enseñaron que los dos son triángulos de 90 grados, y este, esta pierna es congruente a esta pierna, Lo único que falta para enseñar es que los dos tienen la hipotenusa congruente. 
tiene el, la misma hipotenusa, el mismo segmento. En lo, el segmento BC de uno es congruente al segmento BC en el, el otro triángulo porque es el mismo segmento. Y la propiedad es reflexiva. Once you proved all that, then yes, the two triangles are congruent because of the HL triangle congruence theorem. A la vez que ya comprobamos todo eso, podemos decir que los dos triángulos son congruentes por este teorema de HL. All right, next one. So again, let me show the answer to move quicker and we could just study the answer. Déjame enseñar la respuesta y podemos estudiar la respuesta para ir más rápido. All right, so at the beginning you put the given information. Al principio siempre se pone la información, o se de, casi siempre se pone la información que te dieron. All right, so um, the first thing that they write is that angle FGH and angle JHK are right angles. Estos dos ángulos son ángulos de 90 grados, right angles. Okay. H is the midpoint of GK, of segment GK. H es el punto que está en el medio del segmento GK. That's very important because you know what that tells us? If this is in the middle, what that's telling us that is that this segment, I'm going to put two lines um, since there's already one line in this segment. All right. If H is the midpoint, if H is the midpoint, that means that segment GH has to, has to be equal has to be equal or congruent to segment HK. They both got to measure the same amount if this is in the middle. Okay, H es el punto en el medio del segmento GK. Así que eso es importante porque si H está en el medio, eso quiere decir que el segmento GH tiene que medir igual que el segmento HK. Por eso puse las dos rayitas. Como este segmento ya tiene una rayita, tengo que poner dos rayitas aquí para no confundirse con este segmento. All right, so, uh, and here it says FH is congruent to JK. FH, nos están diciendo aquí que FH es congruente al segmento JK. All right, so after you put the given information, it says JH is congruent to HK, and the reason is that's the definition of midpoint. Okay, si estos dos segmentos, la razón que estos dos segmentos miden igual es porque esto es la definición de del midpoint. Eso es la definición. Ok, now here they put a third given information. Aquí pusieron la tercera información que nos dieron al principio, por eso escribieron given. And then once you've proven all that, the two triangles are congruent because of the HL triangle congruence theorem. All right, the hypotenuse is congruent and one of the, and the leg over here is, is congruent to the corresponding leg in the other one. A la vez que ya enseñamos todo eso, Podemos decir que los dos triángulos son congruentes por el teorema HL. Porque ya enseñamos que esta, la hipotenusa es congruente a la hipotenusa y esta pierna congruente a esta pierna que corresponde en el otro triángulo. All right, over here, let's again, another proof. Aquí hay otra prueba. This one's in paragraph form. All right, um, ignore that bell. All right, so given that MP is perpendicular to QR. MP is perpendicular, per perpendicular a QR. That's what this symbol means. The upside down T means perpendicular. Recuerden que este símbolo re uh, significa perpendicular. All right, so they're perpendicular. So angle, angle QNP. Uh, remember that perpendicular lines form 90 degree angles. Recuerden que líneas perpendiculares forman ángulos de 90 grados. All right, so Q and P, this right here has to be 90 degrees, and so does this one. Okay, angle M and R. If, these, if this line is perpendicular, if, line M, if segment MP is perpendicular to segment QR, that means that these two angles have to be 90 degree angles. Si el segmento MP es perpendicular al segmento QR, eso quiere decir que estos dos ángulos tienen que ser 90 grados. Ok, um, now N is the midpoint of segment MP, so that means if N is the midpoint of segment MP, that means that, that this side, or this segment right here, has to be congruent to this segment right here. Si N es el punto en el medio del segmento MP, Eso quiere decir que el segmento MN tiene que ser congruente al segmento NP. Los dos tienen que medir igual si N está 
si n es el punto en el medio. Now, if you look at what I drew there, I already got hypotenuse leg, hypotenuse leg. Si miran a lo que dibu está dibujado aquí en el diagrama, ya tengo la hipotenusa y esta pierna son congruentes a la hipotenusa y esta pierna. So therefore, they're congruent because of the HL triangle congruence theorem. Ya podemos decir que son congruentes por esta teorema de HL. All right, let's look at this one. All right, given the angle ADC and angle BDC are right angles, okay? Así que aquí te están diciendo... Oh, my bad, let me put the answer. Al principio te están diciendo que, que este ángulo también es 90 grados. Ángulo ADC, igual que ángulo BDC. All right, so at the beginning you put the given information. All right, here it says that segment AC is congruent to segment BC. Ok, el segmento AC es congruente al segmento BC. Ok, now, they both have this side in common. Los dos tienen este lado en común. So that's what they wrote here. Segment DC is congruent to segment DC because of the reflexive property. Ok, eso es lo que escribieron aquí. El segmento DC en un triángulo es congruente al segmento DC en el otro triángulo por la propiedad reflexiva. So therefore... Triangle ADC is congruent to triangle BDC because of the HL triangle congruence theorem. Okay, now look, I actually didn't look at the question, but look at the question. What they wanted us to prove was not that the two triangles are congruent. They wanted us to prove that segment AD is congruent to segment BD. Okay, um, yo no me fijé en la pregunta, pero ahora me doy cuenta. No querían que comproba, compro... Déjame tratar de decir eso mejor. No tenemos que comprobar que los dos triángulos son congruentes. Tenemos que comprobar que el segmento AD es congruente al segmento BD. All right, so let me explain something. Uh, we've, I've, we've seen this before, but I believe it's been a couple classes, like a couple weeks since we've seen it. But once you prove that two triangles are congruent, which is what we're doing in line four, once you prove that two triangles are congruent, which is what we're doing in line four, Then we, could, we could, the next, then we could show that any segment is congruent or any angle. Let me say that better. Any corresponding side or segment or any corresponding angles, they're all congruent. You could put any angle congruent to its corresponding angle or any side congruent to the corresponding side in the other one. And the reason is always going to be, if you read this carefully, it makes sense. The corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Like once you prove that the two triangles are congruent, the corresponding parts have to be congruent. The corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Make sure you understand what that says because if you understand it, this will make sense and it'll be pretty easy. You can only use this reason after you've proven that the two triangles are congruent. I'm kind of emphasizing that because this comes up a lot. And if you get it, you'll be able to get it when it comes up a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me, losing my voice here. All right. <clears throat> en español, um, a la vez que uno comprueba que los dos triángulos son congruentes, podemos decir que los lados que corresponden, cualquier lado que corresponde, cualquier dos lados que, que corresponden uno al otro tienen que ser congruentes y cualquier dos ángulos que corresponde uno al otro tienen que ser congruentes por esta razón que si lo leen despacito uh, es importante y, y tiene sentido las partes correspondientes de triángulos congruentes son congruentes Ok, esta razón solamente, solamente se puede usar después de que se, ya se ha comprobado que dos triángulos son congruentes, que es lo que hicimos en la línea 4. Ok, si dos triángulos son congruentes, entonces las partes que corresponden tienen que ser congruentes o son congruentes. Eso sale mucho. All right, um, all right we're done with the proofs. Now we just got to do some algebra and we'll be done. We're almost done, ok. Uh, I'm going to go over four examples that use algebra. Ok, voy a hacer cuatro ejemplos que usan álgebra y ya, eso es lo único que nos falta. What value of x will make the given triangles congruent? ¿Qué valor de x hace la, los triángulos que nos están dando congruente? Alright, so, obviously this is related 
most likely to what this chapter is on, which is hypotenuse leg theorem. So notice that these are 90 degree angles. Estos son ángulos de 90 grados. They're giving us the hypotenuse in each one, and they have this leg in common. No están dando información sobre la hipotenusa en los dos triángulos y los dos triángulos tienen este lado en común. All right, so basically, in order for these triangles to be congruent using the HL triangle congruence theorem, all right, this side, which is the hypotenuse, would have to equal this side, which is the hypotenuse of the other one. Para que estos dos triángulos sean congruentes, solamente puede ser con la información que nos dieron Solamente puede ser usando esta teorema. Ok, así que para y para que este teorema sea verdadero en esta situación, esta, este lado que es la hipotenusa tiene que ser igual a este lado que es la hipotenusa de la otra, del otro triángulo. So that's how I'm going to set up my equation. 5x minus 19 has to equal 2x plus 2. Así hago mi ecuación y ahora simplemente uso álgebra. I'm going to move 2x to the left by subtracting it which is going to give me 3x equals, and I'm going to move the 19 to the right by adding it. And that gives me 21. 3x equals 21. Now divide both sides by 3. Three. The 3's cancel out over here, so x equals 7. All right, now let's look at number 11. All right, they're both right triangles. Again, now in this one, they both have the hypotenuse in common. This side right here is the hypotenuse for both of them. And they're giving us this leg and this leg. So again, in order for them to be congruent using the hypotenuse leg theorem, this leg would have to be equal to this leg, okay? Estos son dos triángulos de 90 grados. En este caso, los dos tienen la hipotenusa. Este lado que los dos tienen en común es la hipotenusa. Y nos están dando información sobre esta pierna y esta pierna. Para que los dos triángulos sean congruentes, solamente se puede usar este teorema de hipotenus hipotenusa pierna. Y para que sean congruentes usando este teorema, esta pierna tiene que medir igual que esta pierna. Así que voy a hacer lo mismo. La ecuación voy a poner un lado igual al otro. Same as the other one, I'm putting one side is equal to the other side. And now I'm just using basic algebra to solve this equation. Move minus 14 to the right by adding 14. 14 plus 8 is 22. You should be able to do this mental math because that's too easy. So x is going to equal 11. All right, let's go to the last two examples, los últimos dos ejemplos. There's my answer. All right, same thing, la misma cosa. All right, so... Um, 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle, the hypotenuse is the side that they have in common. In order for them to be congruent, the two legs got to be equal. So let me write the, my equation that way. Los dos triángulos tienen la hipotenusa en común, así que para que sean congruentes, esta pierna tiene que medir igual que esta pierna, así que así hice mi ecuación. I always like to move the x to the side where the coefficient, that's the number in front of the x, will stay positive. So I'm going to move 4x to the right by subtracting it from both sides. 6x minus 4x is 2x. And I'm going to move the minus 7 to the left by adding 7 to both sides. That will give me 9. Okay, so uh, let me make sure I did that right because I'm getting a weird number. I'm going to get a fraction here. I'm pretty sure I did it right. Just to double check. The minus 7. Yeah, that's right. All right, so x is going to equal 9 over 2. Because when I divide both sides by 2, these 2's cancel out. I can leave my answer like that. You could write it as a, as a decimal as well. If I divide 9 by 2, you're going to get 4.5. I would leave it as a fraction, but both answers are correct. Okay, um, yo dejaría la respuesta como una fracción, 9 sobre 2. Pero también se puede dividir y poner la respuesta como un decimal. All right, let's look at number 13. Um, same exact thing, guys. Uh, they both have this leg in common. Los dos tienen esta pierna en común. Esto es el mismo problema que ya hemos hecho. And this is the hypotenuse. So in order to be congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem, the two hypotenuses got to be equal. 
All right, so I'm going to move 4x to the left. Move the minus 5 to the right. So 3x equals 30. Divide both sides by 3. So x is going to equal 10. All right, and uh, let me display those answers. All right, they wrote the answer like a decimal, but you could also write it like a fraction. Okay, uh, ellos escribieron la respuesta como un decimal, pero también se puede escribir uh, como una fracción. All right, guys, so that concludes today's lesson. The, um, the assignment is in your student portal, 6.3. It's due by 6 a.m. the next day that you have my class. Please make sure to do your homework. And remember that you could do the homework up to 10 times. If you get a bad grade, you could redo it. Okay, la tarea está en el portal de estudiantes 6.3. Lo tienen que entregar antes de, antes de las 6 de la mañana, el próximo día que tienen mi clase. Y recuerden que pueden hacer la tarea hasta 10 veces. Si cogen un grado malo, lo pueden hacer de nuevo. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you guys next class.